Hey, my name is Jonathan, and in a previous video, I talked about how I use my breath and have this time to use my breath a lot more as a way to become present with the with the piece that I'm working on and to relax while you know exerting all this effort of concentration. And I would like to, in my work, expand upon this idea of art uh, as a meditation and, and this you know thing that demands my focus. And I came upon I came across this uh, metaphor being used in this book Atomic Habits by James Clear, uh, which is about making these small changes in your life that over time have an incredible effect. Like uh, if you just do something and you get better by one percent every day for a year, you will be 30, 37 times better by the end of the year, which is uh, huge margins, really. And in this book, he talks about uh, a way of structuring a habit to reduce errors. And in this example he uses is the Japanese railroad system, because these trains are extraordinarily fast. And so what matters is that they can't really have errors. And so the way that they have allowed this to, you know, not happen is that they have a system of pointing and calling, where essentially the train conductor, when he arrives at the station, he will point at the light and say, the light is green and I'm arriving at this speed. And before the train gets to leave the station, all the staff that are on the floor itself, they have to check that the doors that they are inside of are clear. And in the book, he mentions how he saw and witnessed a, a woman whose child got uh, was left behind in the train and she turns around and she, she reaches out and grabs the child's arm and her arm gets stuck in the door. And if this train had gone off, she would have been mangled basically or you know brutally injured, most likely. So what happens is that in less than five seconds, this issue is resolved because the train personnel, they point out, hey, this door is, like, there's, there's a situation here. They open the door, she gets her kid, uh, and they're all safe and sound. And so there's like less than a five second delay, really, to the train, and it can just uh, rush on. And the statistics that is claimed in the book uh, is that this reduces the error percentage by 85%. So how can we use this idea of pointing and calling in our own work so that we you know systemize and and reduce the amount of errors that we do because usually it's those small errors accumulating because we ignored them for a very long time that ends up being the source of the majority of rework that we have to do as artists and I would like to use an example here from an artist who had a very strong process. His name is John Watkiss, and he is likely one of the best anatomists uh, of his generation, essentially. He taught himself anatomy, and he was very well known for being strict on the students to always follow the process. And essentially, like if they skipped a step, he would point it out, hey, you skipped a step here. And uh, he taught really brilliant people. So uh, here's an example from his uh, book, uh, Fly on the Wall Anatomy, like which is just a small demonstration sheet that he did. And you can see that he has been drawing it in, like the structure is in a blue line so that when you scan it, you can remove it uh, in a, with a process of, of how you're ignoring all the blue pixels. And so when you end up in this as a result like this, where you have all the anatomy visible. But it is all stuff is that you know you have the major masses and the gesture line of it, and then he then exerts and and and, and you know pulls out the anatomy from that from that basic structure that he made in the beginning, and that's what ends up resulting in the, the final drawing. And a lot of artists they 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 do this quite naturally when you are drawing from life for instance you are given a model and then you know you draw it you know and then you you have it 
But what happens then when people are drawing from imagination is that usually we we skip way ahead because we want to get to the juicy bits, uh, you know, of like drawing the details and like having an expression on the face. And what ends up being the usual case in in a lot of ways is that you end up just drawing a bust, you know, like a head from here, and then you kind of like cut it off. And then that's that because you don't really know how to connect the rest of the pieces because you didn't consider the pose as a whole, you know, to point out what it is that you're drawing before you even began. And if you I take something that's not necessarily a, a demonstration that's so strict that the, the previous one, this is a drawing that John Watkins did for Tarzan. And you can see that there's clearly no like huge structural drawings of like to indicate the end of the rib cage uh, on the bottom of the rib cage here where the latimus dorsi comes, but you can still see that there's plenty of smaller lines where when from when he was searching for the pose. So first he found the pose and then he expanded on that and, and made it into this very wonderful drawing that it is. And he made thousands of these drawings for the production of, of Tarzan. And in the case of studying a drawing such as this, because these drawings are heavily stylized, you can see here that the scapula uh, has been modified into a very simple shape because this is supposed to be used by animators down the line. Um, in the case of that, if you are drawing this from this and you're making a study off of it off of this drawing what will help you out is just to simply indicate you know in your head or just speak aloud you know that uh, these are the muscles that are here like okay we go from the deltoid here's the trapezius and how it's indicated that and you just follow along verbally speaking out each piece of anatomy that you're crossing over and in some cases you might find that you don't know this or because that you're paying attention to it also in the drawings that you are doing from your imagination, say you are drawing and then you say, wait, wait, hang on. I thought I knew for sure, but I'm definitely letting this slip because you pointed it out to yourself that you don't know this point as you were going over the drawing. It makes it much easier to simply make a, have a little sticky note block of things that you need to pay attention to. Uh, and you just put that aside of like, hey, I didn't know this. I'm, I know for sure that I didn't know this. And then when you come back to your system of study that you likely will establish alongside me, uh, then you can say, well, okay, well, here's some things I definitely don't know. And then you can just point that to yourself and go and read about those right away. And it will make it much simpler to cover the holes that are accumulating in your work. Because if you just draw without this kind of like idea of thinking things through then you will likely plateau in a way where you don't know exactly what's going on and so this idea of pointing out the the work also applies of course to more than just gestures so i have a sketch here this was from uh, 2015 16 i believe and I kind of like had this idea of a woman painting her dog in this barn structure. And I got to this point and then I really, okay, I don't really exactly know what was going on. But I sat on the idea for a long time until I kind of had the idea of, 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 of doing this. And each element in this piece belonged there. Uh, like, so it, it, I'm speaking majority of, of the backgrounds because once the structure of the central focus was in order then each thing that i added i can simply think to myself oh yeah this is a background piece this is like something that she would have because i'm painting her uh, studio space you know like I'm, I'm painting a painting that she made or that she, a friend of hers made and gave to her and like she's just having you know, this big collection in the background of works and progresses of paintings of her dog and okay so this fits in and because the detail has already been established in the foreground, I can then just make these little details that are that end up being just a few blocks because I'm not too concerned about them. The problem I might arrive at in a piece like this is that 
if I don't, if I forget, if I forget what the piece is about and I forgot, forget the point of it, then what will take place is that I might focus too heavily on these details. And so, uh, you know, getting the perspective on average just right on the part that you can barely see is okay. But if I put my focus on it and I really struggled through the... Um, you know, and, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm, like, I'm getting my ass kicked by a vase or something in the background. It's just important to remember what this piece of detail is. And like, do you need to really to expand so much on that? Like, say you are drawing an alleyway and you are having trouble like painting a trash can, you know, like suddenly this problem, because it's, it's focal in your mind, that becomes almost more important than the fact that you're painting a murder happening like right next to it. And then like, so you end up with this piece where like, the trash can, uh, like this like, uh, recipe for garbage, is much well, more well painted than the central figures like fighting it out and duking it out, you know, just not right, ne right next to them. Uh, and that's really the, the major point of this is just, just to uh, take the steps that you're already doing and then just see what happens to your process if you point out what it is that you're doing as you're doing it. And then once you have uh, established a process, do you, can you see if you are skipping any steps that might help you further down the line? Like say, if you're drawing a building, did you do a sketch and then construct the perspective of it? Or are you just winging or like making up the perspective as you go along and kind of like getting into trouble because of that? There's plenty of times where the actual procedure to get ahead of your painting is just to take a step back look at what it is that you've done and what it is that you're doing and then go backwards to figure out the, this, this background stuff of like what is the actual idea of it and then when you move forward it's much smoother because you really know what it is that it takes to get to that point to get to the to the final point and that's the that's the idea so you find out what's going on and then you don't have to call out, the, but you can try and just say it out loud to yourself. Like, this is what I'm doing. This is what's happening. And then let me know how that went for you, because I'm, I'm very curious to see how this might apply in a wide variety of circumstances, because it is just painting and drawing while being more conscious of what it is that you're painting and drawing. And I hope that you will appreciate that gift. Thank you for listening.